Naya Kenny, 18 years old, speaking out after defending her classmates and being taken into custody in her Spring Valley High School math class. I love science ever since I was a little girl. 16-year-old Central Florida honor roll student accused of igniting a chemical explosion on school grounds, leading to her arrest and suspension. You see black girls be natural born earthquakes. You see black girls be the smoke and the boom. Black girls like their bass loud for the smoke and the boom. Every time you suspend a child out of school, that child's risk of ending up in juvenile hall goes up. One suspension. All it takes is one. Black girls in particular are situated in communities where there is a misrepresentation and misunderstanding of their expressions of femininity. There are lots of ways in which their behaviors are misread as loud and sassy and aggressive when in fact they're just manifestations of their critical thinking. Black girls don't get the benefit of the doubt. They don't get the leeway to be children, right. right? They're treated as little women, right? And so when they behave in ways that the school finds inappropriate, the censure is immediate and harsh. And we capture so many girls who are experiencing extreme victimization as truant. And that's sort of where we stop the conversation. I'm here to give testimony um, as a person who was in the education system and was pushed out into the criminal justice system. She nodded to, to the guy with the badge on and he handcuffed me. He got me in a car. He said, you know why you going to jail? Because you've been ditching school. The connection that I was looking for was just someone to like kind of understand what I was going through, not to just label me as a delinquent because I didn't want to go to school. Young girls, and especially me, when I was young, I needed someone to be there for me, to walk me through. You can't just come in and then have a curriculum and then expect for them to understand your curriculum when at home they're witnessing their mom or their parent being beat. They need help with that. You'll see that the girls who are most at risk of school pushout are also girls who have extensive victimization histories. There were fewer than 10 girls in the facility that day, and all of them had been assembled into a small group for a book discussion I'd come to facilitate. About halfway through the discussion, the younger looking face among them raised her hand. She adjusted the oversized county sweatshirt covering her petite frame and looked at me. Well, my name is Denisha, and I'm 11 years old, she said. And I'm a hoe, that's what I do. That exchange still haunts me, mostly because since that day I have encountered many more Denishas, girls struggling to overcome the exploitative conditions of poverty and abuse, who roam hallways and streets wondering if anyone really cares about their well-being. I've been around so many children that have been a victim of what happens when you're pushed out. And when you're pushed out of school, especially when you've experienced sexual violence or sexual abuse, and especially when you've experienced poverty related to finances or love, the commercial sex industry is waiting for you. The girls who are disproportionately um, vulnerable to school pushout are girls who have had negative relationships in schools. And so we have to begin to piece together you know, these dots and really begin to understand what our community can do better to acknowledge the trauma that impacts whether girls are able to feel as if they are welcome parts of a school community. My question is, as a young black girl, is there warning signs to go through school and go through life to not get pushed out. The first thing that, that you can do to not get pushed out is what you're doing. You're standing up and you're asking questions. You need to keep doing that. The reason I came here is because my mom wanted to know how difficult it is to actually be a young black girl. How it is, how you have to learn how to not have people overpower you. You want them to see you for you, not for where you come from, not for how you grew up, for you, for how you are now. You're never gonna be okay unless you have a community of people that really care. I found a new way of life and they gave me the platform for me to stand on and let me know that just because I've been through all those institutions doesn't mean that I am that institution. By the age of 16, I had, to, I had been to over 23 different schools and 30 different foster homes and group homes. Um, and I stand as a living testament of what is possible when we believe in our young people. And when we see something in them that they can't see in their self at the moment, and we activate that. 
To me, this is part of my practice of not participating in any form of oppression by centering the conditions of girls who are like I once was and who have experienced many of the things that I experienced. And I hope that individuals that are being victimized or that have been victimized and have not yet received that help understand that there is hope. And believe me, just like there's so many people out there that are willing to hurt you, the secret is there's more people out there that are actually willing to help you. Help happens when women make it happen.